Anyway, let's get to Dakar because that's why you're all here. Right, over the past 24 hours, there has been a few things that I've managed to find out about Pats and Dakar. And as I said to you guys, I did put the feelers out yesterday. I got some people who just completely blanked me. I got some people who said they're unaware of interest. But then I did get a few other people who said to me, yes, there is interest in Dakar. And I'm going to tell you now what I found out. So, right. Liverpool are 100% looking at the player. That's unquestionable. And anyone that disagrees with me on that, I'm sorry. I know I'm right on it. Liverpool are monitoring and looking at him. As are a load of clubs around Europe. Arsenal being another one. Um, he's one of two attacking targets that I've managed to definitely find out that Liverpool um, are monitoring or looking at. And they're public knowledge. They're Dakar and they are uh, Ismail Assar from Watford. Which one is a preference? I can't give you an answer to that. I do not know. I don't know if we're more likely to go for Sar or I don't know if we're more likely to go for Dhaka. What I have honest, managed to find out about Dhaka as well is when he signed his last contract with, with Salzburg, there was a 75 million euro release clause put into that contract. That doesn't mean that Salzburg are going to hold any buying club to that 75 million euro, but I guess they're just protecting their assets because of what happened maybe. Well, actually, he signed this before the Takumi Minamino thing, but uh, maybe... Maybe they're just starting to know that they are a good feeder club now. They are producing great talent. And obviously, he's a Zambian international. People are worried about the AFCON as well, if we go out there and go after Dhaka. But I can tell you this for certain. Liverpool are interested in the player, and Liverpool are certainly looking at the player. Um, I've seen figures, and again, this isn't from people that I've, I've reached out to. This is just me reading articles. I've seen figures ranging from about 20 to £25 million pound for Dhaka, which, I've got to be honest, seems quite cheap. If you're looking at Watford asking around 40 million for Saar, yes, he's a player that has more Premier League experience, but he's a player that has one year of Premier League experience. So if I was to have a preference on this one from the little I've seen of Dakar, and I've probably not seen a whole heap of Saar either, I'd edge towards paying the £25 million and going to get in Dakar from Salzburg because the style of football that Jesse Marsh and Salzburg play is not a million miles away from the pressing game and the high-intensity game that Jurgen Klopp and Liverpool play, which, again, has been you know, public knowledge in the media. You've guys seen it. We played Salzburg on a few occasions as well. They're a difficult team to come up against. And they've got some really good talent, some good young talent there coming through as well. Um, which one is more likely... I don't know. I don't know. Uh, the the talk around the the Dakar situation is that there is. How do I phrase this now? It could be the long game with Dakar. I mean, it it might not be a this summer thing, which doesn't really feed into what we need. Which we need a forward this summer. Um, a lot of clubs will maybe give him one more season, so it could be a late decision by Liverpool if they're going to pull the trigger and put in an offer for the kid or if they look at Saar. I mean, I'd love to know what you guys think. Which one would you prefer if, if you've been monitoring both situations? Um, but again, I'm just going to stand over the fact that I 100% know that Liverpool are looking at Daka. That's all I can say to you with regards to him. Uh, you, whatever else happens, we'll go from there. I uh, love your t-shirt, Craig. Thank you, mate. Straight from Adidas. He's for sale for £20 million. Liverpool will buy him, said Kev Mack. Again, mate, that's kind of the figure that I've seen mentioned, but all I can say for certain is that there is a €75 million Euro buyout clause that was put into his last contract um, with Salzburg. That's all I know for absolute certain. We should be in for both Sel Origi and Shakiri. Yeah, look, we're not going to go for both. That's, that's, again, the blunt answer with that. We're not going to go out there and sign both players this summer. Will we sign one of them? Potentially, yes. We do need to add a forward, even if we are keeping Wilson at the club. Um, I know he plays out in a wide position, but I still don't think he's good enough, and I'm still not comfortable going into this season with Divock Origi, um, Takumi Minamino, and Harry Wilson, maybe along with Shakiri as backup. It's just not good enough. I'm looking around me now, and I'm starting to... Not get impatient because I understand that this is a difficult window for the club and we are trying to leave it as late as we can to see what the, the club's finances are like. But I want to just read out something to you guys. Uh, a little quote from, from Daka, which I'm sure you've all, or a lot of you guys will have heard. But this is what he was uh, spoken speaking about Liverpool about before. He said, when I was a kid in my family, we had a kind of competition that everybody has to support a famous football team. I chose Liverpool. With my first step on the grass of Anfield, a dream will come true. I've seen so many matches and heard so many stories. Now, that was obviously before um, he played against the club. And uh, you can see he loves Liverpool. Liverpool, 
our club that attracts footballers from all around the world. People want to come and play, particularly under Jurgen Klopp at Liverpool. That doesn't mean that you know that means anything to Liverpool that he's spoken about us before. We've heard all this from Timo Werner, and I understand everybody's frustration. I understand that. I feel the same frustration that you do. Um, but some people are just unrealistic. Like I was reading the chat before this stream, and I'd seen everything from Williams is crap and he can't defend. The Ryan Brewster should never take a penalty again, and stuff like that. Um, it's very unfair, and I would question anybody's knowledge of the game or loyalty to the club if they start to spout that type of shite about a player like Williams, who's only a young fella, who's only after signing a new deal, who's just gaining experience and has competition to go up against one of the best right backs in, in world football right now. By the way who's also still learning his trade. So, I don't know. I don't understand some of the negativity. But I do 100% understand people's frustrations. Um, let's move on to Sar now. I've nothing really brand new I can tell you about Sar other than he's being considered. Uh, both, one thing that Liverpool fans keep saying to me over and over again, and I'm with you on this one, is the worry about if we do go for Dhaka or we go for Sar, that we do have to worry about the AFCON. Uh, in the future, because obviously we have Sadio Mane, we have Mohamed Salah. I'm not aware of Guinea's situation. I know they're obviously an African country, but I'm not aware if they've qualified for the AFCON or not. So technically, we could also have Naby Keita there. And if we sign Sarah Daka, that could be another one that we lose. What I will say is, Klopp's not an idiot. The club will be aware of this and they will take that into account when they're looking at players that they're going to sign. Like They'll know that we'll be without these players for potentially, what, four to six weeks or something when the AFCON is on. So, you know, the club are aware of that and that will be part of the decision-making and that could be one of the reasons why maybe the club are, are just leaving it till the last second or looking around to see if any other options become available. Um, as much as we talk about Liverpool not having a lot of money in the transfer market right now, that's a better position than some other clubs around Europe who are really struggling right now because of the impact of the coronavirus and Barcelona being one of those clubs. So Liverpool are going to look to try and capitalise on a lot of this fear and a lot of this uncertainty as well with their transfer business. And again, it just involves us having patience. The question here is, do we trust Jurgen Klopp and the club? Or are we going to throw our toys out with a pram? And a lot of us seem to be back smack right in the middle. We know that if Klopp's given the money, that he will get the right players. His record speaks for itself on that one. But we have frustrations about the overcautious nature that we seem to be taking into this transfer window. We'd all love to be sitting here right now talking about a new signing. I mean, United today announced Van de Beek. That's great for their fans to talk about. They're still banging on about Sancho and they're looking forward. And I get it. I get why a lot of Liverpool fans are feeling pretty annoyed right now because I'm the same as you guys. I feel exactly as you feel. It's frustrating, but it's going to take patience and we will get there. We are the Premier League champions. We have set the standards. Um, so Christopher Ajar. A couple of reports of the UK claim the club's interest in bringing in Celtics Christopher Ajar, or Ajar, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, as a replacement for Dejan Lovren. Let's not forget we do probably need a replacement for Dejan Lovren. We are short in that, in that area. Um, and I've got an angle that I want to pitch to you guys on this and see how you feel about it. So this one surprised me a little bit, the links to Ajar. Not the fact that it sprung up because you guys have been saying this name to me for a few days now and I just hadn't read much about it. So didn't really have much to talk about. But I did do a little bit of looking into the guy and what he's 22 years of age. Um, my expectation was that we brought in a more experienced centre-back. Somebody who would allow Billy Cometio and somebody who would allow Sepp Vandenberg and that to develop. But there's also another way of thinking here. And this is what I was saying to you a moment ago. I want to pitch to you. Maybe going for somebody like this guy who's 22 years of age. He's a big fellow, by the way. Six foot six, Norwegian international. Maybe Liverpool are looking to bring him in. And then in a year or two, if Sepp Vandenberg or Billy Cometio is ready, move John Matip on. I never clicked with that in my head. And I started to wonder today, could this be Klopp's plan moving forward? Because with the greatest of intentions, we do know that Joe Matip, as much as we all like him, and I really do like him and rate him as a defender, he can pick up an injury every now and again, as can Joe Gomez. So if we bring in another young player, and that young player proves, develops well over the next season or two, as does our own young players, then maybe Klopp will look to move on, Joe Matip or somebody like that, in a year or two. And maybe I approach my thought process on this centre-back situation a little bit wrong. And I'd love to know what you guys think about that. Would you like to see the club go out there, maybe? 
maybe had an experienced head are you excited about the links to somebody like uh, Christopher Ajar who's what 22 years of age um, as I said I did reach out to a couple of Celtic supporting mates who are over there quite a lot who've watched quite a bit of this kid um, and I said it's a mixed bag at times he has started to become more consistent lately but I just immediately said to my mate, don't tell me this is another Dejan Lovren-esque type of player. But he said, no, he does seem to be coming a little bit more stable as time goes by. And he is only 22 years of age as well. That's important to remember.